Romans chapter 12, verses 4 through 5. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. Good morning. I'm Annie Norris, and thank you so much for attending this year's Youth Sunday. Words cannot begin to describe how honored I am to be here giving this sermon today. As Christians, it can be baffling trying to imagine how God wants us to spread his word through gifts, thus leaving many of us to wonder, well, what is my spiritual gift? It is so easy to distinguish recognized gifts, such as preaching, healing, music, and singing, but what about the unrecognized gifts? I was fortunate to become involved in the five o'clock service by sharing God's word through song, but I'm and I'm blessed to have found a spiritual gift at such a young age. I was able to find this gift through my mom, and my mom's gift is also by sharing music through the piano to praise God. My dad jokingly told me he didn't know what his spiritual gift was until he went to his first session meetings. He couldn't prophesy. He doesn't speak in tongues unless he's angry. He doesn't play an instrument, and I've heard him sing. Trust me on that. However, he can read a balance sheet and an income statement. He told me that it's what the church needed at the time, and so he served on the finance committee. We have many members who add to our worship of God in ways you might not ordinarily think of as a spiritual gift. Anyone who has the patience to make our communion wafers knows this, as do the members of the altar guild who make sure our sanctuary reflects the majesty of our Lord. Along with the women who help watch children who are too young to sit through the sermons and all of the tutors from Stair, the list goes on and on, and we are blessed it does. Our church is one body, and we are all the members. Without us, the body would not be able to function, no matter what part you play. If everyone had the same spiritual gifts, our church would not be the church we are today. That is why it is important not to conform to the highly recognized gifts. While discussing the sermon with Dan and Catherine, they suggested I add a story from the Bible that talked about spiritual gifts. So I did some reading, and I came across Mark chapter 12, verses 41 through 45. This is the famous story about the old woman who was only able to give two copper coins, but Jesus says she gave more than any other. Therefore, Jesus tells us true gifts are how we give, what, not what we have, but what we give. Jesus doesn't ask our gifts to be one specific thing, but instead asks us to give what we have with our hearts and with our love for God. Last weekend, we had a beautiful Easter service. But what if in that service, we didn't have the flower arrangements, the acolytes, the ushers, bulletins, hymnals, or the hundreds of people that attended church that Sunday? It wouldn't be the same, right? See, no matter how you choose to contribute to the church, you are helping us grow and create the amazing services we have all throughout the day, every Sunday. When we combine all of our gifts, we make the true body of independent Presbyterian church. Even if you feel your spark is small or not dignified, remember, your role often plays a huge part to someone else's church experience, larger than you might think. Amen.